In this lesson, I will demonstrate the usage of the sensitivity wizard drag and drop sensitivity wizard on top of the parametric system which must light up in green. We don't want to change the already defined parameter settings nor the predefined criteria and go next. In the third step, you define the same link method for the variation analysis. I recommended using the default which is adaptive MOP. Special AMOP settings will be adapted afterwards. It's an iterative procedure. We will use global refinement type to achieve a global prognosis quality of 0.9. For this, a maximum of three iteration steps are started. We set the number of samples to 50 for each iteration. This will lead to a number of samples used of 50, 100, or 150, depending on the convergency of the global prognosis quality. Additional solver options could be set up for the variation study. On my workstation, more than 40 CPU and enough licenses are available to enhance the number of concurrent solvers calls to 10. Finally, run the sensitivity study. Let's have a view on sensitivity study post-processing. From approximation history, please note that one iteration out of three was used only. This means 50 designs were sufficient to create an approximation model of high prognosis quality. Quantification of parameter influence is shown by values and color in the COP matrix. Red means high values or very important, blue low values. COP total is higher than 97% for all responses, which is very good. Most important for all responses is thickness of bumper beam T-1. Second and third most important are thicknesses of both other parts. Unimportant parameters are automatically filtered out. Therefore, friction is no longer included here. From visualization of approximation model, we can see costs become lower when the thicknesses become smaller. The same applies to the maximum deceleration, which becomes smaller when the thicknesses become smaller since the stiffness is reduced. But, of course, deflection becomes larger for smaller thicknesses. You see, the expected physical behavior was automatically detected and approximated, and the most important parameters are ranked according to their importance. Post-processing is interactive. You can select single designs to check their details, for instance, to control if the maximum displacement is smaller than 205 mm. There are a lot of additional visuals you can drop into the post-processing to get a better understanding of your data. For instance, adding the parallel coordinate plot, you can easily filter for designs that meet requirements, as shown here, for the restriction of a maximum displacement of 205 mm. Post-processing is interactive. Selecting designs in one window will also mark the selection in others. You can also have a look at the signals to check their variation. To do this, drag a new visual into the, the scenery. For deflection signals, we see the variation of the maximum value in the height and time. An enthill plot you, uh, can be added to control the relation between last value of displacement to maximum value, you see the previously defined constraint is obviously fulfilled. Therefore, all 50 designs are marked as feasible. In this lesson, you have learned how to set up a sensitivity analysis using the wizard. You have been introduced to the basic handling of the OptisLang post-processing, and you were familiarized with the most important outcomes of the sensitivity past processing, especially the automatic ranking of the parameter influences. Through the sensitivity analysis, an MOP was created, the predictive 
capabilities for the response are very good, therefore this approximation model can be used as a solver substitute for the subsequent multi-objective optimization.